The Martian landscape is a harsh and unforgiving environment. Scientists have been studying the planet tirelessly to answer the question, are we alone in the universe? Does life exist? Wait, who's that guy? Oh wait, sorry, this isn't Mars. This is the Mars Desert Research Station in Utah. Hang, hang on a second. There we go, Mars. Mars is 34 million miles away from Earth at its closest point. And over the next decade, NASA and the European Space Agency will spend billions of dollars to bring back rocks and dust from the red planet. They want to check for signs that life ever existed there. It's unlikely that this Mars sample return mission will bring back anything dangerous, but the space agency still need to prepare for the possibility that something in the samples is alive. So what happens if we bring back life from Mars? Since it landed in 2021, NASA's Perseverance rover has collected samples from here, the Jezero Crater. This was once a lake of liquid water and may have held the key building blocks of life about two and a half billion years ago. NASA has to isolate the samples to make sure they can't be contaminated by anything outside Mars and to make sure they don't contaminate anything back here on Earth. Doing that involves the most complicated robotic space mission ever. First, Perseverance places its sample tubes into a sample container inside of the sample retrieval lander, which should arrive on Mars around 2030. With the samples moved from Perseverance to the container, the lander moves the container into a rocket called the Mars Ascent Vehicle, or MAV. Then it literally throws the MAV into the Martian air before it fires its rockets and heads back into space. The sample container should keep the samples sealed up for their entire journey to Earth. Once in Mars orbit, the sample container is released and captured by the European Space Agency's Earth Return Orbiter. It takes two years to carry the samples to Earth before ejecting them to enter Earth's atmosphere and land. For the Mars sample return mission, those final moments present the greatest risk. The sample container has to land without a parachute in the desert near where this video began, in a remote part of the Utah test and training range 80 miles west of Salt Lake City. NASA is confident it can execute this elaborate plan without accidentally releasing any samples. But getting the samples here is just part of the challenge. After landing, the samples will go to a nearby, purpose-built containment facility designed along the lines of a biosafety level 4 lab, the highest degree of containment for studying pathogens and the weaponization of microbes. BSL-4 labs have a history of leaks and accidents, not to mention NASA's own history of high-profile failures. The proposed biolab will have to combine the traits of a standard high-risk biological laboratory with those of facilities protecting extraterrestrial material from exposure to Earth's conditions. This means they will need both positive and negative air pressure to keep Earth organisms and chemistry out, while keeping possible Mars organisms and biogeochemistry in. The lab would also need to ensure that the samples are not degraded or contaminated when studied for biological purpose and thereby ruined for study by other scientists like planetary geologists and geochemists. The MSR lab will join the rapidly increasing number of BSL-4 labs around the world, now numbering 51 with 18 more planned, mostly in Asia. You might be asking, why bring them to Earth at all? Engineering equipment that can operate in zero or minimal gravity is very difficult, and the tools used by scientists to study these samples are large and expensive. Strapping them to a rocket to conduct experiments on Mars isn't really an option. For now, the only way we can learn about life that potentially existed or exists on Mars is to bring it back to Earth. If the mission is successful, it will be an astounding achievement, but we should never forget that the search for life carries great risk, because we won't know if we're bringing back something dangerous until it's already here.